Introduction The first model of atom was proposed by J.J. Thomson in 1898. According to this model, the positive charge of the atom is uniformly distributed throughout the volume of the atom and the negatively charged electrons are embedded in it like seeds in a watermelon. Rutherford's nuclear model was a major step towards how we see the atom today. However, it could not explain why atoms emit light of only discrete wavelengths. In this classical picture of the atom, the electron revolves around the nucleus much like the way a planet revolves around the sun. Alpha Particle Scattering The figure shows a beam of alpha particles emitted from a radioactive source at a thin metal foil made of gold. Alpha particles emitted by A, B, I, 21483 radioactive source were collimated into a narrow beam by their passage through lead bricks. The beam was allowed to fall on a thin foil of gold of thickness 2.1 into 10 to the power minus 7 meters. The scattered alpha particles were observed through a rotatable detector consisting of zinc sulfide screen and a microscope. The scattered alpha particles on striking the screen produced a beef light, flashes or scintillations. These flashes may be viewed through a microscope and the distribution of the number of scattered particles may be studied as a function of angle of scattering. Rutherford's Nuclear Model of Atom A typical graph of the total number of alpha particles scattered at different angles in a given interval of time is shown in the figure. The dots in this figure represent the data points and the solid curve is the theoretical prediction based on the assumption that the target atom has a small, dense, positively charged nucleus. Many of the alpha particles pass through the foil. It means that they do not suffer any collisions. Only about 0.10% of the incident alpha particles scatter by more than 1 degree and about 1 in 8000 deflect by more than 90 degrees. Atomic Spectra When an atomic gas or vapor is excited at low pressure, usually we are passing an electric current through it, the emitted radiation is a spectrum which contains certain specific wavelengths only. A spectrum of this kind is termed as emission line spectrum and it consists of bright lines on a dark background. The spectrum emitted by atomic hydrogen is shown in figure, while white light passes through a gas and we analyze the transmitted light using a spectrometer, we find some dark lines in the spectrum. These dark lines correspond precisely to the wavelengths which were found in the emission line spectrum of the gases. This is called the absorption spectrum of the material of the gas. Spectral series Hydrogen is the simplest atom and therefore has the simplest spectrum. In the observed spectrum, however, at first sight, there does not seem to be any resemblance of order or regularity in spectral lines. But the spacing between the lines within certain sets of the hydrogen spectrum decreases in a regular way. Each of these sets is called a spectral series. This series is called Balmer series. As the wavelength decreases, the lines appear closer together and are weaker in intensity. Balmer found a simple empirical formula for the observed wavelengths shown above, where lambda is the wavelength, r is a constant called the Rydberg constant and n may have integral values such as 3, 4, 5, etc. This equation is also called the Balmer formula. Bohr model of the hydrogen atom At the beginning of the 20th century, there was a great deal of confusion as to why the classical physics had not been able to explain or account for the observed characteristic atomic spectra. The question that had many wondering was, why did the atomic spectra containing line of light at only certain frequencies and in return only absorb light of the same frequency? The dilemma was well understood. The earlier works of Max Planck had offered a great framework for developing new perspective work into the field. But the person who eventually managed to marry classical notions with the new quantum outlook was Niel Bohr. Bohr's postulates Bohr postulated that atoms are made up of a nucleus with electrons going around it in near-perfect circles. He then made the assumptions shown above. Energy of a hydrogen atom Bohr's postulates can be used to calculate allowed energies of the atom for different allowed orbits of the electron. The theory developed should be applicable to hydrogen atoms and ions having just one electron. Thus, within the Bohr atom framework, it is valid for the helium 1 plus, lithium 2 plus, beryllium 3 plus, etc. Let us consider the case of an ion with the charge of nucleus being ZE and an electron moving with a constant speed V along a circle of radius R with the center at the nucleus. The force acting on the electron is given by the expression shown above. 
Equations 1 to 4 give various parameters of the atom when the electron is in the nth orbit. The atom is also said to be in the nth energy state in this case. The line spectra of the hydrogen atom. When an atom makes a transition from the higher energy state with quantum number Ni to the lower energy state with quantum number Nf, that is Nf lesser than Ni, the difference of energy is carried away by a photon of frequency Vif as follows. Equation of the Rydberg formula for the spectrum of the hydrogen atom. In this relation, we take Ni equals to Nf equals to 3, 4, 5, etc. It reduces to a form similar to equation for the Balmer series. The Rydberg constant R is readily identified as shown above. De Broglie's explanation of Bose postulate. Louis de Broglie postulated that the electron in its circular orbit, as proposed by Bohr, must be seen as a particle wave, in analogy to waves travelling on a string. Particle waves too can lead to standing waves under resonant conditions. When a string is plucked, a vast number of wavelengths are excited. However, only those wavelengths survive which have nodes at the end and form the standing wave in the string. It means that in a string, standing waves are formed when the total distance travelled by a wave down the string and back is one wavelength, two wavelengths or any integral with themselves. For an electron moving in the nth circular orbit of radius Rn, the total distance is the circumference of the orbit that is 2 pi Rn. Thus, 2 pi R equals n lambda, that is n equals 1, 2, 3, etc. The figure illustrates a standing particle wave on a circular orbit for n equals 4, that is 2 pi Rn equals 4 lambda, where lambda is the de Broglie wavelength of the electron moving in the nth orbit. We have lambda equals h by p, where p is the magnitude of the electron's momentum. If the speed of the electron is much less than the speed of light, the momentum is mv to the base n, thus lambda equals h by mv to the base n. We have 2 pi rn equals nh by mv to the base n or mv to the base n r to the base n equals nh by 2 pi. This is the quantum condition proposed by Bohr for the angular momentum of the electron. Laser light. Light is emitted from a source in the form of packets of waves. Light coming out from an ordinary source contains a mixture of many wavelengths. There is also no phase relation between the various waves. Therefore, such light, even if it is passed through an aperture, spreads very fast and the beam size increases rapidly with distance. In the case of laser light, the wavelength of each packet is almost the same. Also, the average length of the packet of waves is much larger. This means that there is better phase correlation over a longer duration of time. This results in reducing the divergence of a laser beam substantially.